Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, I finally got a chance to get around to have a look at the new Peppermint OS that has come out. And I gotta say, it has come a long way. It is still has some things that they need to be working on, but overall it is becoming and shaping itself into a new rebrand. So of course, to understand, Peppermint OS used to be based on Ubuntu. It went through a variety of different changes on the desktop environment using at times hybrids and things like this. And um, this is one of the projects where sadly the uh, original developer maintainer had passed away and the team that came in behind it really kept respecting his wishes. One of the things that he was working on and wanted to see happen as a move away from the Ubuntu package base. And I think that any distribution right now that moves away from the Ubuntu package base is doing a good thing. And so with that, they have moved. Now, moving from Ubuntu to Debian is in some cases, in some ways, a little bit going backwards. And we have to recognize that it's not going to be a perfect transition. But what Peppermint's able to do is to bring in a lot of good tools to help make Debian a little bit better. Now, what is under the hood in Peppermint that is different from just running a Debian? Um, those types of things, I'm not the guy to tell you about. What I'm the guy to tell you about is how's it going to work with you as a user, as you're looking around, as you're experimenting with the distributions. Let me tell you where they're at. First and foremost, I got to start by saying here's one of the downsides. They only have one download mirror that I was able to find. That is SourceForge. The reason I did not get this distro out earlier is I could not download it. Every single time I downloaded it from a variety of different places, the download simply failed. Now, I've been told, I was talking to some of the people on the Peppermint team, and they said, well, they get tons of hits all the time and haven't seen the complaint. Eh, maybe I'm just hitting the server at times it's really busy. Even today, when I grabbed it, I had to restart it. It had failed three times on the download path. So downloading it could be a challenge for you if you're anything like me. Now I'm using a, I used a friend's hot, a friend's wireless internet is what finally got it for me. I tried a variety of different wireless hotspots around town, couldn't get it running from there. And so, hey, we landed here. Then came the install. Um, the first computer I tried to install it on, it did fail. It got stuck at 74%, 30 packages. That lagged on my main system. And to be sure, I was installing it on a system without quite as much power. Maybe if I left it sit another half hour, it might finish, but it was literally sitting there for 20 minutes without moving. So I canceled that. The main processing computer stopped what the processes I was working on was doing. So I just switched over to that and got Peppermint installed. So now we can see it is that computer that is Peppermint running behind me right now. So I was able to get it installed. It did take a little bit getting beyond that. As you get it installed, one of the greatest things, this is the absolute best thing that they've done and one of the best things they could have done for a Debian-based distribution. Now in the installation process, you have the option to choose your packages on install. So if you want to have, you know, X number of packages available, as soon as you first turn your system on, they're available. I didn't see every single package under the sun, but I was able to see most of the, the common packages that are out there and available. So you can choose a variety of web browsers. You can choose a variety of, of um, uh, tools for audio and for um, video pr processing. I'm trying not to say Office Suites because the only Office Suite was LibreOffice in that selection. Um, I didn't double check this. Uh, I should, uh, but I'm pretty sure they are going to enable your non-free uh, repositories in Debian. So it's going to be uh, already set up for that kind of things. And I'm guessing that because you have the ability to install your audio codecs also during install, which is extremely rare for a Debian distribution to, uh, to have as an option, but that it does. So once I got it installed in my, uh, 
VirtualBox setup here. I did have to install guest editions. Most Linux distributions based on Debian, you have to manually install the guest editions to get the full screen working and to get a few of the little odds and ends of the system to work. So that worked out just fine. I got that installed and no issues from there. So once you get into it, you land on the desktop. How does it relate to the last iteration of Peppermint where I looked at it and said, eh, it's, it's gone backwards a few steps, but that's not a bad thing. It went backwards a few steps in order to walk further down a better path. And I think that it is slowly beginning the journey down that better path. It's not quite there yet, but it is certainly on the way. So let's talk about a few of these things that I think are possible uh, needs improvements. Well, the updater. There is a little update manager. When you click it, all it does is pops up a terminal and asks for your password. You enter it and it basically just runs a sudo apt update and upgrade. So you can do that. It's going to, uh, it's going to let you know there's an update to run it and then you have to pull that up. Now if you go inside the Peppermint Hub, there is a separate update manager that has a few extra options. It would be really cool if they were to integrate the two together and pull up that instead of the simple terminal that they're pulling up from the bottom corner because that would be a neat option to have in. It gives it a little bit more distinction even though that is a tool that in and of itself still is nothing more than a terminal updater, but we have an updater for the main core and we have an updater for the Peppermint tools specifically. Okay, the next is, uh, I, I did mention the that I didn't see the ad blocker in the previous one, it is there, I was corrected on that and it's still here, it's called H block. It does not work quite as well as the last one did where you can choose what set settings, you simply Double click the H block inside the Peppermint Hub. There's no other options. It just wants your password and then it proceeds to dump every one of the ad blocking things into the host file on the computer. Uh, this is bad if you happen to know a little bit about which scripts are involved in which one of the individual options. It'd be cool to have an advertiser only, maybe a session replay option, maybe a crypto option, maybe an ad network, maybe an adult site network. It'd be cool if we could choose a few different options. We don't have that, but you click on the button one time, enter your password, and it dumps all these things into your system. You do still have the option as you had on the previous form where you can install some peppermint extras which involves peppermint themes, peppermint icons, uh, and some extra tools. Now, uh, wallpapers I think is the third one. Now it does come with just like three or four peppermint specific wallpapers. This is one of the default wallpapers you see behind me. It has that. It has some theming that looks nice. It really does look good out of the box without being overly bloated. And that's why I like this tool that they have. It's very good because you don't have a system like Linux Mint, for example. They dump about 100 themes now on your system, and that takes a lot of disk space just to dump all of these themes. It'd be nice if they gave us one or two with a button click like Peppermint's doing to say, hey, why don't you go ahead and install a bunch more and that way I can say, eh, I want all of the extra themes, let's dump them all on here. But really it is an attractive and good looking system without dumping those themes on. But if you want more uh, pepperminty themes specifically, you can go ahead and do that, that works. On the downside that I saw, things that haven't really changed, the f there is a button inside the Peppermint Hub for Flat Hub, Snaps, Gnome, App Images. These are all cool ideas, they're the beginning seeds of ideas, but they are seeds that have not yet grown. Each of these is going to open up basically an ICE application and a web page, and it's going to tell you about it. The Flat Hub one is extremely useful as long as you click in a few steps. What they might want to do is change the redirect going to the specific steps for the quick install on Debian because if you go through there, it's two clicks to get there. If you go into the Flat Hub, click on the quick install, click on the logo for Debian, and follow those few steps inside of there, you will have flat packs working on your system out of the box. As it is right now, the button simply takes you to the flat pack page, which for a new user is useless information. Um, if you know how to navigate, that's fine. Snaps, 
Well, this one just takes you to the basic snap page. So you load the tool up and you are immediately prompted with a cookie box notification. I, I think it'd be better just leave that one out <laughs> unless there's some better information you can put there other than navigating to a page which gives you a cookie acceptance prompt. Um, the GNOME Store one, that one, if you have the GNOME Store installed on your system, if you've installed it during the installation process, or if you've installed it through the Peppermint Recommended Applications on the home page, that's going to open up the GNOME Software Store. Otherwise, it takes you to the uh, GNOME website where it talks about the software store. Again, not the most useful information out there for the new user. So it'd be nice if you had some script or something working on in there that gave us the option to install it, not just a web page through the ICE application modules. Uh, that being said, the other cool things they do, there's no web browser installed by default, but you have the option on the welcome screen to install the web browser of your choice. This gets away from the web browser war. Some people want Chrome. Some people want Chromium. Some people want Brave. Some people want Firefox. Some people want nothing to do with any browser that's not their personal favorite. I love what Peppermint did here. Uh, Here's a bunch of web browsers. Click the one you want to install on the welcome screen when you first boot up. Uh, hey, that's awesome. That is the best solution of every world out there. So overall, Peppermint, it's based on Debian, so it's going to be rock solid. You're not going to have problems with Peppermint once you have it set up. It gives you this great balance of non-bloat with the easy ability to bloat up the system with everything you happen to want and nothing you don't. That is awesome. The theming options is awesome in that it looks great out of the box, but you have the ability to click in more and download more stuff if you have the extra disk space, the bandwidth, and you want to be able to do that. All of these are really cool options. I would say that this Peppermint is going really well. I'm still going to say Peppermint in the current state is probably not the best distribution for a brand new Linux user because there are a lot of terminal boxes that pop up and ask for passwords, and these can be intimidating for some people. I encourage you if you're new, learn to use the terminal, learn to not let it intimidate you, but at the same time, um, this distribution is moving along in a great way. I really truly think that they did take a step backwards in order to get down a better path and any distribution that is taking the beginning steps that Peppermint is doing right now to move down a Debian path and leave Ubuntu behind is going to be a good distribution to be reckoned with in the future. So Peppermint team, you guys are doing an awesome job. Keep it up. If you've not had a look at the brand new Peppermint, go ahead and have a look at it. Let me know your thoughts about Peppermint. Tell me know your past experiences about it uh, and all these types of things. I'm still using Peppermint, the older versions, not the new one, the, the older versions. I'm still using Peppermint 10 as my encrypted banking software, which is probably due for an upgrade. But hey, um, for now, we'll keep it because it's working for me. But anyway, let me know your thoughts, your comments, experiences, loves and hates of Peppermint. Let me know those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Have a look over the website, switch to linux.com if you want to help support the site or uh, anything we're doing here on the channel. Share these videos far and wide. I have somehow managed to piss off the YouTube gods. Like I'm getting very few views these days for whatever reason. I don't even know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, maybe there's just other more compelling Linux YouTubers out there. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this guy's a crazy dude in a van down by the river. But hey, hey, I'm doing amazing things in my van by the river, as you can see. Well, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.